So we got a huge new event in NHL 22, the Evo Fantasy Hockey event. Honestly, one of my favorites every single year as it ties in the real NHL and the performance that the players have directly into the cards. So we're going to break down all of the costs, all of the cards, how they work, and if they're worth it like always. Guys, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for the most up-to-date NHL 22 content. And check me out live on Twitch. I go live every single day at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Again, link is down below. All right, let's get into the Evo Fantasy Hockey event. All right, guys, the Fantasy Hockey Evo set. Let's start first with how it works for anyone that's new to the game. Like I said in the opener, this is one of my favorite events, if not the most favorite. For every goal that a forward scores in the NHL or the European leagues, depending on the player, they will go up plus one overall. Now, you need to remember that their speed only goes up by 0.5. All right, so remember that. So it would take two goals to get a guaranteed plus one to their speed, sometimes based on how close they are to, you know, to the actual going over the next attribute. It, that all depends. Now, the defensemen, for every goal that they score, obviously it's a lot more, uh, a lot less eventful than a forward. For every, every goal a defenseman scores, they will go up plus two overall, meaning that they will go up a speed stat no matter what if they score one goal sometimes it might go up by two now for a goaltender it's plus one for every win or shutout which by the sounds of it means that for every shutout that a goaltender gets they'll go up by two overall which is actually pretty huge and we're going to talk about that in a little bit but a customizable synergy slot added at 95 overall and they can go up to 99 obviously only regular season nhl shl league games count so ahl if a player gets sent down those don't those do not count so just need to keep that in mind. So let's first take a look at all of the new cards. All right, now I'm not going to rank these guys at all. I'm just going to give you a quick overview because I'm going to have a video that will actually go into detail about whether or not I think that these cards are worth it. But I'm going to talk just briefly about each one. We'll start with the 75 Nick Ehler. So you have to remember that obviously for goal guys that score more goals, they start lower overall. So you know, Nikolai Ehlers has 139 goals in 427 games. He's got three on the season already. It doesn't retro retroactively add. He averages about 22 goals a season. So if he's got three already, you can safely assume that he's probably going to score about 20 more. Now, where does that make him end up? Well, that would be at least guaranteed 95 speed, 95 acceleration, 90 agility, and then his shooting stats would all go up by 20. So we're looking at basically 70 or 96 for his slap shot accuracy and power, and then seven or 98 for his wrist shot accuracy. That's phenomenal. Like if he gets up there and there is a real strong possibility that he scores, you know, 20, 24 goals the rest of the way that he could be a 99 overall card. Now, you have to remember that it's going to take some time, and this is not a card that you can use on your team just yet. That is one of the bigger factors that needs to play in, that he is going to have to score some more goals for you to actually put him on your team, and there is risk in that because if he gets hurt or something like that, then you're just you're SOL. So you need to keep that in mind. Ankle breaker is okay, but not, not worth it in my opinion. So we'll talk about his value in a little bit. This is one of the riskier ones. Next, we've got Andre Burakovsky for the Avalanche. He's got three goals in the season already, and the last two since joining the Avalanche has averaged about 20. So you can think that he scores about 17 more. And again, with how everything is going to work, that's about low 90s speed and acceleration. Again, his shot is going to get up into the high 90s. Magician is okay, uh, but again, not a card that you can use right now. However, he is six foot three, which is amazing with big rig because if he can get up you know if he scores about seven or eight more goals his speed is going to be high enough to make up for the fact that he or to, to add on to the fact that he's six foot three but again it's not a card that you can use just now and it is going to take quite some time to upgrade again this is a big risk one for me next we've got the 77 overall oliver bjorkstrand He's got five goals on the season in 10 games, so he's having a phenomenal year so far. He averages about 20 goals over the last three seasons. So again, same kind of situation as Ehlers and Burakovsky. We're looking at 86 speed. That means if he scores 20, he's going to be at 96, which is obviously great. There's really very little room for him to go any more than that. And his shot will all be 99. Hand stats will all basically be 99. This is going to be a nuts card, and he's... A little bit more close to being usable with about three or four more goals. You know, we're looking at like 88 to 89 speed is, you know, his balance and endurance will be very low 80s. Same with his shot. So he's going to need about five to six more, I would guess. And at a 20 goal pace, like that could be quite some time. But again, if he gets hurt or anything like that, you're in tough. But this one's close. This one's close to being usable. Next, we've got the 78 Ilya Sorokin. And man, the card art for this event is incredible. 
He's got Distributor as well as Wingman as a first choice and then Light the Lamp and Thief, which is a great synergy combo to have to help you out. And I'm not going to lie. I like, I've mentioned throughout all of my videos that Superstar and Zone abilities for goaltenders are not worth it in my opinion, but Tip Jar is very good as for two ability points. And No Timer is probably the best zone ability you can have on a goaltender, and that costs four. I still wouldn't recommend activating it, but just keep that in mind. Now, for every win that he gets, he is going to go up plus one. He's already got five on the season. He's having a great year in nine games. Now, Varlamov is still there. So it is going to be tough for him to just win outright and, and run away with the job. And if he does, you know, 25 wins is probably where you're looking at. And again, he's already got five in the bank. That is really going to depend and, and really, you know, kind of be the focus of this. Or oh, Just looking at it in plain value in terms of the cost that it's going to take to get him. Not worth it. There's one that's coming up that we're going to discuss in a little bit that is much more, but he would basically be a 99 overall card with 25 wins. And the only thing is that he's six foot two. So that is obviously a knock against him. And the reason why I bring up another option is because the 78 overall Robin Lehner with buzzing and workhorse as an option at six foot four, his base card is one of the best in the game. Now he, Vegas has not had a good start to the year, but you can almost guarantee that he is going to be the workhorse and get 30 wins roughly. That's a 99 overall goaltender with buzzing, which is a good synergy, and he will get another one at 95 overall. This is probably the safest card that you're that, that is in the entire event. Now, is he worth the, the hundreds of thousands of coins that he, it takes to get? We're going to talk about that in a little bit, but this is probably one of the safest because this could be your goaltender for the rest of the way, and he only needs like like five more wins to be usable right now, and honestly, he could probably be usable at 80 overall. Next up, we've got the 79 overall Vladimir Tarasenko, and he looks to be back into his regular elite form. Now, he's got 11 points in 10 games but only four goals, and it's been a while since he has averaged his 30-goal pace. So he right out of the rip, he's six foot, he's got 85 speed, 85 acceleration, and his shot is above 80, which is nice. And Gladiator does help a little bit with the balance, as well as body checking and wrist shot power. I would say that 25 goals is probably the safe bet for him. And again, he does have some injury history now, so there is risk there. So for him to get to 90 speed, it would take 10 more goals. That is going to happen no matter what. If Vladimir Tarasenko plays, he's going to get 10 goals and probably qu more quicker than a lot of these other players that are available because once he gets to 90 speed, guys, then he's usable. Like, you can use that for the majority of the year. Speed has really been kept in check this year, and 90 overall speed is kind of like the benchmark, especially early on. Like, January, we're going to start seeing cards that come out that have 90 speed that aren't master sets or guys with synergies that require them. So I think Vladdy is a pretty good investment because it is safe. And if he pops off for 25, you're laughing because he is probably the best goal scorer among the bunch of these cards that are out here. And, you know, he's already got good shooting. Well, at 80 overall, which is good enough. So this would be a nice investment in my opinion. On to Jeff Petrie. He basically guarantees 10 goals a season. Okay, he's six foot three, which is great size. Now, 10 goals is only going to be... 92 speed. Now, I say only, but you have to remember that it's probably going to take mo most of the year to get to 10 goals if he does. So we're talking like April, and then he's only got 92 speed. There are going to be bigger defensemen that have some crazier cards than that. I think if you're a Montreal Canadian fan, this is a great one, and there isn't a lot of awesome defensemen you can use, but 82 speed is so slow right now that he's going to have to score like seven goals in the next little bit to be useful compared to the other ones. This one is a hard avoid, in my opinion. Then we've got the 80 overall, Jared McCann. So he is an interesting one uh, because obviously now a lot more playing time and a lot more opportunity in Seattle. Right now, he's got three goals in eight games, seven points, which is phenomenal. But so far in his career, he's averaged about 15 goals. 15 would be his career high, but he's hit 14 twice prior before that and a lot less games. So... 15 to 20 is probably a, a very, very good estimate. Like the Lamp and Thief. I like Thief a lot, obviously, and you can put him at center. It's going to take a little while to get there, though. So 86 speed. He's going to have to score about 10 goals to get up to 90, which is nice. And then at, if you add 10 to everything, he is in a really, really good spot. But how long is it going to take him to get to those? That would be 13 goals in total. And that would almost be his career high already. So, again... I don't think this one would be a very good choice because a lot has to break right. However, this is the this is one of them guys because of the opportunity with the Kraken because their depth is so so weak. 
that this could be the James Neal of NHL 20. For anyone that doesn't know, James Neal went to the Oilers. He got a fantasy card. And no one wanted him because he was off of just a bunch of awful seasons, and he blew up for like 15 goals in 20 games, and he was basically the best card in the game. This has the potential to be one of those. We've got my man Phil Tomasino. We're going to talk about the prospect packs in just a moment. But Phil Tomasito, former Ice Dog great, has buzzing, which does help quite a bit because that is obviously bump his speed up plus one and his agility to 91, which means that he can actually make those L2 cuts quite well. Unstoppable Force is a good superstar ability as well. It all depends on, you know, again, he is getting a big opportunity with the Nashville Predators right now. And currently on the season, he's got three goals in 10 games. He is shooting the puck. Again, for the ones, this is this is a different type because there is a prospect set, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. So this has different value. Among the prospect players, this is probably one of the ones that I would want to get because he only needs like eight goals, and he'll be at 90 speed. And then you're you're laughing because that's a pretty good value. Be at 90, you know, 90 speed with buzzing and unstoppable force activated is pretty good. And I think, you know, 11 goals is easy for him again former first round pick with the ice dogs uh, he looks really good he had 13 goals in 29 games in the ahl so this is one of the better prospect ones you can get next we've got the 81 anton lundell former 12th overall pick in 2020 by the florida panthers he's got three goals in seven games already however he is gonna have to light it up for him to get anywhere returning the right value it's six foot one that's nice he's got wingman and buzzing which is good so that's an 83 and quick pick is or sorry a quick draw is also a very good one as well for a center but he's gonna have to score like 10 goals to get to 87 overall speed or 88 and 10 goals is probably two months away and at that point you're you know it's just it's just gonna take an awful long time he's not a giant center and six foot one is good but he's got a good shot, I'll say that, and his hand stats are good as well that will prorate out, but he's got to score like 10 to 15 to be useful, and even then, there's bigger centermen like Couturier and Kopitar that I'd rather have because they're just bigger. So among the prospect ones, this isn't one I'd want. Next, we've got Petrie Contiola, who is a seventh-round pick by the Blackhawks in 2004, currently playing in the SM Liga. He averages about 15 goals a year in that league. So he has distributor, which gets it up to 84. But again, he is going to have to score about, you know, 10 goals to get to 89. And, you know, he's already got five on the year. So not, not, wor I mean, if you're, a, you know, if you're a Liga fan, then okay. But this is one, I, the one thing I will say is that his shot power is already 87 overall. So if he scores like five goals, you're already into the 90s. But the accuracy is so low and, for a forward, that's a little tough. Face-off rating is nice as well for six-foot center. It's it's just going to be tough with that skating set because, again, much like Lundell, he's just not very big, so he doesn't take advantage of being a center that well. Then we've got the 81, Phil Kessel. My man, I love Phil Kessel. Averaging anywhere, about, about 20 goals a year right now. He's got two and 12 games for the awful Arizona Coyotes, and there's a pretty good chance he probably gets traded. Has spark, which does help out. The one thing is... He's got 86 speed, and much like Tarasenko, he has the realistic chance that he could pop off for like five and you know five and eight games. Like he has that potential, but he's gonna have to score eight to get to 90 already, and he's only got two. Eight would be halfway through the year. It might be time to leave the Phil Kessel on the bench here. I don't know if this one would be worth it. Of all the ones that could be like James Neal, Phil Kessel could be it. Like there's definitely in that realm of possibility that he could absolutely explode. Next, we've got another prospect card in the 81 overall, Michael Bunting. Now, this is probably one of the safer forwards because he plays with in in one of the best forward groups in the NHL with Nylander and 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 Matthews as well as Marner and Tavares. So like he is in that top six. He has spark, which helps his acceleration. He's got three goals in 12 games, but his speed starts at 84. Now again, guys, just how it works. If, if speed goes up by 0.5, okay, plus one overall to everything else, speed by 0.5, we're looking at, like, you know, uh, 12 goals to get to 90, and he's already got three. That's 15 goals. That's that's tough. He would have to absolutely blow up. So I think that it's a bit of a reach for him, and, and Crease Crasher is not all that great. This is probably one I would avoid. I get why it's going to be a popular one, but I don't think it's going to pan out the way that everyone thinks. Next, we've got Moritz Sider, 82 overall, another prospect pack uh, option for you. He's got Quick Pick, which is one of the best defensive superstar abilities. Six foot four is great size for a defenseman. 
And honestly, if you can get Magician on him, that's nice because his agility goes up, makes him feel less stiff. But Bombarded really helps out with his shot. 85 speed for someone who's six foot four is almost borderline like usable now. This is a lot like Seth Jones already, like right out of the gate. Or I guess it would be closer to Dougie Hamilton. He's only got one goal, but he has been him and and Raymond have been absolutely electric. The Red Wings give him every opportunity for offense. It's just with defensemen, again, guys, remember that defensemen are going to go up plus one overall, plus two for everything else, but plus one for speed. So speed would go, you know, if he can get five more goals, he'd get to 90 at six foot four, which is just absolutely unfair when you combine the two, but it could be a while. This is almost usable now because of his size. You can't change the attributes on size. So this is probably like, I think Tomasino is the pick if you're, if you're looking for the prospect pack. But more insider is a very, very good option. It's just if he if he goes like a month without scoring, he's going to be replaced and he won't be usable on your team. Then we've got Alexander Romanov, 86 speed, 86 acceleration out of the gate. This one I don't have much faith in. First of all, I mean he's six foot, which isn't great, like it, it, which isn't bad, but it's not it's not elite. I guess would be the the best way to say it. And he's only got two career goals in 66 games. Okay, so let's say he gets to five. That's 91 speed, 91 acceleration, and then everything else is is looking nice, but this is not the one you want. If you pack him, you're that's a tough one. Next, we've got the 83, Andrew Mangiapane, who has blown up so far to start the year. He's got seven goals in 11 games after scoring 18 and 17, respectfully, in shortened seasons. So there is a real chance that he gets to, like, 25 goals. This is already almost a this is already usable card. I mean, he's only 5'10", and he's only got 88 speed, so that's obviously rough. But at four more goals, he's at 90, and you know that's well within his realm possibility right now, considering how nuts he has been so far. And with five more goals, you know he is at like 91 speed, and his shot is all 90. So I think this is one that is pretty safe and if you got him you know you're you're in for you're you're gonna get a 99 i think would be my opinion moving on to mikhail sergachev the 84 overall all right so again another issue here he's six foot three which is which is great it's not super elite but it is not bad bombarded is a very good synergy or wingman i think wingman might help out a little bit more thunderclap not really one that's worth uh worth activating in my opinion so he has gotten two goals already this season four last year and 10 is his career high in 70 games so let you know eights would eight more would be you know safe that's not bad at all that's 92 speed six foot three shot his shot though is is going to be under 90 in that sense very very good card i just don't think it's use like it's it's close it's not usable right now I'm not a fan of this one. I think that this one has a chance to not go well. He scored four goals in 56 games last year. You know, six, nine, ten is his highest. So I'm not a fan of this one. Then we've got the 84, Morgan Riley. And, man, it's crazy to me that four seasons ago he had 76 points. I completely forget about that. In his career high that season, he had 20 goals, which is clearly the outlier because the next closest was nine in a full season. So he's got no goals so far this season. I would say that, like, Eight to nine goals are is safe. He's got 88 speed out of the gate. He is already usable. It's 6'1", 88 speed, 88 acceleration. He has no goals. That should, you know, correct itself a little bit. If he can get three goals, four goals, he's at 92 speed. His shot is not going to be great, but Bombarded does help out quite a bit. This is one of the safer ones, I think. Like, if you got Morgan Riley, I think that there is a potential chance that you get a 99 overall. And even if you don't, he's going to have enough speed already to be usable, which is a huge plus. And uh, it, with a potential chance to be a complete game breaker for you. Then we've got our next master set item, the 87 Neil Pionk. All right, so his career high in goals is six. All right, he's already got one this year. Let's say, you know, five more would probably be a safe bet. 5'11", 94 speed, 94 acceleration. That's very good. That's very Kale McCarrish. But there's also a chance that he doesn't score that many. And he's only 5'11". Bouncer's pretty good. Bombarded is nice. He also does have buzzing, though, which does make his speed go up to 90. He is usable right now, but his cost is absurd. 
So he is not worth it in my opinion, but we'll talk about that in the video later on. But the 87 Neil Pionk, he's not going to go up by very much, so it's going to be weeks before you see an upgrade or in-between upgrades as the season goes along. Then we've got the 86 Matt Duchesne. And let me tell you, this is one of the most fire content cards they have ever released because this is already one of the best cards in the game. And he has a huge opportunity for growth. So last year, obviously a very down year. 34 games played. He had six goals. The year before that, he had 60, uh, 13 and 66. He is probably going to average, I would guess, about 20 goals. Like uh, 20 goals seems safe, even if he gets 15, okay? That's enough to get 99 speed, 99 acceleration. His shot will all be above 90. Like he has already had a pretty good start to the year. Five goals in 12 games. Does he keep that up? Probably not. But it means that 20 goals is probably within the realm. This is already a great card, and with a couple more goals, like maybe in the next week or so, you've got one of the best cards in the game for the majority of the season. If you can get this Matt Duchesne, this is one of the cards that you chase because it is up there with Connor McDavid, Mario Lemieux, and Gretzky. Awesome card, and I cannot wait to get him. All right, so that is all of the cards. Let's take a look at the sets. As we break them down, I did the same thing I did in the last event, did all of the numbers for you, crunched all of the math, and let's talk about the cost of these. So we're going to work on Matt Duchesne, obviously the most sought-after one here. It is going to require 2083 overall plus cards, 1184 overalls, 885s, 686s, and 387s. What that works out to be, 800,000 coins in value. It's going to be about 100,000 for all of the 83s, 154,000 for the 84s, 168,000 for all of the 85s and 6s, both 168 each, and then 210,000 for the 87s. Now, it obviously is going to change drastically depending on the untradeables you have. But if you don't have many, if you don't have any 83s or sorry, 87s or 86s, it's just such an astronomical cost. Now, that is a very very high cost. But would you pay 800,000 for this Matthew Shane? You guys are paying $2 million for the X-Factor Connor McDavid, and that costs you money or coins to upgrade each tier. This does not. Every time he scores a goal, it goes up automatically. 800,000 coins is insane. It's a very, very high cost. It automatically eliminates a solid about 90% of the player base from being able to make him. This is the card you want to go out and get, guys. 800,000 coins. I would normally never recommend you guys spend that kind of coins on a card. This is one that I totally recommend doing because you've already got a card that is one of the best in the game and is almost guaranteed to go to 99 overall sooner rather than later. Now, it's the same cost for the other two. Is 800000 for Neil Pionk worth it? Not even close. 800000 for Sorokin? I would rather have Robin Lehner. So that eliminates those two right off the rip. Now it's like in the other sets because this is where things get interesting. All right, so now let's move on to the random fantasy hockey prospect set. So like I mentioned, of the prospects that you can go out and choose between, you can get uh, one of these and, again, do it again. There's also one in the store. It's going to cost you 56,000 coins to get one of these cards. Do I think it's worth it? It's a random one. So if you get Romanov, that sucks. If you get Lundell, not not good. If you get Bunting, I don't think it's going to be worth it. Now, if you get Tomasino or Cider, I think you're in, that's worth it, especially Cider. But that's a huge risk. I wouldn't re recommend spending 56,000 coins on a risk. Now let's talk about the Fantasy Hockey Evo player item choice. This is a choice pack, one of three items from any of the week one cards there is going to be multiple weeks of these fantasy cards so what is the cost of this if you add up everything that it is going to require here it's multiple 83s 84s 85s 86 and an 87 that's 534,000 coins this is not worth it because you could get three awful options and i half a mil when you're basically 250,000 coins away in value from getting duchene no chance am i doing that so this is a hard pass i would not recommend doing this set now, this one is interesting. You can trade in 30 gold players. Yes, 74 to 79s count for an 83 to 87 overall player. It'll be random. Here is the thing. If you have a ton of untradeable ones and you don't have a lot of X factors that you could cash them in for uh, power, up, uh, power up collectibles, I actually recommend doing one or two of these. And the reason is this. It's going to cost you 24,000 coins in value because they're going for about 800 now to do one of these, and you could get, you know, an 85, 86, 87 overall player. The one thing I need to mention, though, is 
honestly, guys, unless they're untradeable, I would not do this because right now is when you're going to start seeing the market dry up on those cards and you could sell them for like 900, which I would totally recommend doing. I'm talking about the non NHL 74 to 79s that I've been telling you to hold on for, for something like this to come in. Okay. So if you have untradeables, hundred percent do it because you have a chance to pull, you know, base Sidney Crosby, for example, that, that is huge, but you have to remember that you're going to have to pull at least an 86 or 87 to gain value because, you know, the 85s are going for about 21,000 coins. This costs 24,000 in value, so just keep that in mind. But if you have any untradeables that are non-NHLers, 100% do this set. Then lastly, the Fantasy Hockey Evo Challenge, you can exchange gold players for a collectible. Don't do this at all. Don't do that set at all. All right, guys, now let's talk about the store, okay? Because there is a lot of new packs out. We need to discuss this because there is one that I'm going to get a ton of questions about. And that is this one, the Week 1 Fantasy Hockey Evo Prospect Pack. It's untradeable. You get 12 items, including a Fantasy Hockey Prospect Player, first week, and five guaranteed gold players. Here's the thing. If you do not get Tomasino or Cider, you just wasted 50,000 coins, in my opinion. Now, you know, at least these cards you could hold on to, and they have a chance of popping off. Like, if Lundell goes on and scores 25 goals this year, that's awesome. Same with Bunting. There, So it's not like you're completely lost in value there is a chance it depends how much of a gambler you are i think there is a possibility that it is worth it if you are free to play player i wouldn't recommend it no uh, honestly because you're risking way too much and even if you get thomasino or cider you could probably use fifty thousand coins on a more valuable card right now that'll be usable in your team if you are going to rip packs again guys do not rip the premiums only rip these ones that are limited and then once you run out of points Wait until tomorrow, and then the new store will refresh with limited edition packs. Buy them. These are the scam packs. They won't pull you anything. The rest of these, again, these are all n never buy with coins, okay? Never buy with coins. But just go ahead and look at the uh, if you're the the actual percentage of pulling something. So for this one, the sleeper pick pack, it's 17% to pull an 83 plus. It's 450 as opposed to this one where it's like you're never going to get one. And they're 150. So I'd rather pull these 450 ones and you can pull as many of these as you want. So just want to, I just wanted to bring that up. All right, guys, that was a long one. I hope I answered all of your questions. I will have a video that will rank all of the fantasy cards and the ones I think you should go after. The market is going to be nuts over the next few days. If you are free to play or you have no shot at completing this Matt Duchesne, guys, wait until tomorrow and then sell everything. Big, big thing. And again, I will discuss that tomorrow. I'll make a separate video for you guys. But you can make a ton on the market right now because everyone is going to dry up chasing that Duchesne. And you've got an opportunity to make a lot of coins. All right, guys, that is going to do it for me. I will see you next time. Have a good one.